Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder. He does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu, and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm gonna leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On The Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and in today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, current professional goaltender Kevin Carr. Kevin is currently playing in the ECHL with the Utah Grizzlies. Kevin played four years of Division Three hockey at Buffalo State College before beginning his professional career in the SBHL with the Peoria Rivermen before heading to the ECHL along with some, some stints in the AHL and the American Hockey League as well. So welcome to the show, Kevin Carr. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, how have you been? Like, it's been like a crazy month. Like we were talking earlier. It's so, like, what's what's the last month been like for you? Yeah, currently we just got back uh, with Utah right now. We just got back from a eleven day road trip. But uh, before that, from when I got here in in January, um, spent about a week or two in Utah. Then went to Colorado and uh, the AHL because they they needed a an extra goalie. Um, Right now they had, they have an injury just with uh, Peva Francouz and the French host, however you say his name. And, um, you know, it kind of opened the door for me to, to get up there. And uh, a couple of years ago I was under contract with them. So there was a little bit of familiarity with uh, both of us and uh, yeah, I went up there and uh, ended up signing a contract, a two-way contract. So I've been up and down a little bit uh, between Colorado and Utah this year. And, uh, but yeah, currently we just got back from a long road trip. So it's nice to be home. Yeah, for sure. Like, what was, what was that road trip like for you? And, like, how, how do you guys do? Uh, to be honest, it was pretty tough for us. We, uh, we're, we're struggling a little bit right now. There's uh, no secret. Um, so we were in Wheeling, West Virginia for three games, and then uh, we went to Allen, Texas, and then went to uh, Wichita. So <clears throat> it wasn't uh, our best road trip that we've ever had, but um, sometimes that's what happens in this game. And it's a good thing that it's happening to us early and hopefully we can use it as a positive um, aspect to our game for, for uh, the rest of the season coming. Yeah, absolutely. You, you hate when that happens, but you'd rather get out of the way sooner than later, especially like when you're going for a run at the playoffs, like you don't want that to stop you right then and there. hundred percent. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in, you know, the negative things or uh, you know, the bad bad times in your career or in your season are only going to make you a better hockey player in the end. So um, it's tough going through it, but later on you appreciate those times. Yeah, I totally agree there. So can you give like our viewers a little back on information on yourself? Like when you started playing hockey, what made you become a goaltender? And like, what was your first real moment where you're like, I want to be a goalie? Yeah. Yeah. So I have an older brother. He's three years older than me. So growing up, uh, I'm from Toronto and growing up, Obviously, in Canada, hockey is uh, a way of life. And yeah, so growing up, my, my family was big into hockey and uh, my dad was a hockey player as well. And 
Um, he kind of got us on skates when we were really young, two, three years old, we were skating in the backyard and on the ponds. And um, I think that's kind of where the, the love of the game really grew. Uh, so when my brother started playing, he was a player and on his team, uh, the goalie actually had a really cool helmet. His dad was a race car driver and uh, had some extra decals that he was using for his race car and he ended up putting it on his helmet. And I always Sick. thought that was just so cool. And I think that's what really drew me to the position. And uh, so I was a player from about five to seven. And, you know, I said to my dad one day, like, hey, I think I'd like to try goalie. And he said, okay, let's go and try. So um, from seven years old on, I, I never looked back and I'm 30 now. So I've been playing goalie since I was about seven years old. Yeah, that I feel like all all goalies are like get like in a in it with the goalie gear and just like that's why we want to be a goalie and not not for stopping pucks or anything like that's that's another question out of the out of the way but just seemed like the gear and itself like it, you have so much custom customization that you could do with it and it's just mm -hmm. it's it's awesome how much how much you can customize that gear especially nowadays with, you know, Bauer's new DigiPrint and um, CCM is following suit and other companies like Brian's who have been doing it since day one, way before everyone else. Um, you goalies can really express themselves and not just with a helmet or a paint job, but now with actual gear, which is pretty cool too. And yeah, so that really um, sparked my interest, I think in, in goaltending. And then obviously once I became a goalie and, and realized the position of it and how much work it takes and, um, how much of a factor that you can become in the game and you know you truly can win a game for your for your teammates obviously you can't score goals but um, on the flip side you can save them so uh, that was really a, a selling feature to me as well yeah for sure I, and that, that's awesome like when like the games are close and like you get you get a big save the other team your team goes down scores a goal and or like the momentum like shifts from that save and it's incredible how that works and how big a part of a game a goalie is. That's so true. Yeah. There's nothing, not a better feeling than making a save for your teammates or, um, you know, making a, a good play or a good pass or something that results in a goal. But yeah, it's, uh, those are the moments we, we keep playing for, right? Exactly. A hundred percent. So I want to start things off with, uh, you discussing your hockey journey because, you're on, you were on a path that a lot of goalies haven't been on. Like you were, you were undrafted into the OHL, USHL, like, et cetera. And so can you explain like your path to us and like that you, you weren't drafted to the OHL, USHL. So like what you had to do to like work your way up to get a shot with the Atlanta junior Knights. Sure. Yeah. Um, growing up, I was always a smaller kid. Um, I kind of grew a little bit later and, um, I, I don't know. I, I never like to use that as a factor, uh, whether it's height or anything like that, because I think if your skill and your ability and your work ethic and drive um, can overmatch that height difference or anything like that. So I don't like to use that really as an excuse or anything like that as to why I wasn't getting drafted. I just wasn't good enough. And uh, I'll be the first one to admit that I wasn't good enough. I never played tier two because I just wasn't ready. It wasn't good enough. And thankfully the Atlanta Knights uh, gave me an opportunity, which is um, some of the best times I've ever had in my life and in my career to date is uh, with that team. And um, unfortunately it's not even a league anymore. I think it dissolved into something else. I'm not sure what it's called now, but um, yeah, they gave me an opportunity. I couldn't find a tier two team to play on uh, back home and that team had come to Toronto for a tournament and we actually, I think they entered the wrong tournament and uh, we ended up playing them. It was a really tight game and they invited me to a tryout uh, for the next season. So I went down there and made the team. And uh, from then on really started to, to develop my hockey career because we were on the ice every day and, you know, practicing and uh, being with the guys and really learning the ins and outs of the game and who I was as a goalie and who I was a, as a person, because, you know, I got, it was started a little bit late because I went there and I was, uh, I guess I was 19 years old. So, you know, people who start junior are usually around 15 or 16, but I had a later start. So maybe I was a little bit more mature at that time. 
and I could appreciate and, and um, really understand things a little bit better about the opportunity that I had. And uh, thankfully, I got to play a lot of games. And like I said, we were practicing every day. So it really gave me a good chance to, to work on my game. And from there, uh, I went to school, went to Buffalo State. And um, after I finished there, I wanted to keep playing. And that's where I am now. Yeah. So like what kept you motivated when, especially when like things weren't going your way, you didn't get a tier two offer to yeah. play juniors and like you had to work your way to find a team. So like what was the motivation behind all of that? Uh, the motivation was that I was never drafted. The motivation was seeing my friends that were drafted and that were playing in the OHL were, were playing ahead of me. Um, you know, I, I grew up playing on a, a triple A Mark and Waxers team and, I was on that team for seven years and right before our minor midget year, year before that, we, um, who were, you know, that year you, you get drafted to the OHL, but I was cut. So I, I wasn't playing triple A anymore. And I was playing double A a couple of years before the OHL draft. And, you know, that's a uh, motivation in itself to, to keep going. There's two ways you can go. Obviously you can drop off and be upset that you got cut and um, you potentially could never play again. Uh, but I, I took it a different way. I, I was upset that I, I was up. I was upset at myself for not putting in the work like my teammates were doing in the summertime. You know, I like to play golf and hang out with my friends and uh, you know play lacrosse and other sports. And I never really put time that was needed. And knowing now the time and dedication you need to become an elite athlete like that is um, second to none, to be honest with you. And and I, I just didn't realize that. I didn't know. I didn't understand. And, and now I do. But uh, unfortunately, it was a little bit too late. So I was never drafted. And that was the motivation for me. And I, I tried to carry that on from when I left home and, and went to Atlanta. And um, yeah, that was, uh, you know, I, I wanted to continue playing hockey. So obviously the, the, the OHL or USHL or the Q or the Dub or anything like that, that wasn't in the cards for me. So I knew that school was my route. And uh, so I really wanted to do that. Yeah. So during that first year that you had with Atlanta, you played in 22 games. So you got a lot of games, like you said. So like, what was that year like? And just being able to get that shot, like you always wanted in Atlanta and be able to, cause you had some stellar numbers there too. So like what helped you develop throughout that time, especially with like playing like every day? Yeah, I, I, just like you said, I think playing every day and, and being with my teammates who were all, all really good hockey players. And I think there was some, some sort of a league record or something we set with the amount of the players on that team who ended up going to school or getting uh, um, either scholarships or ended up just playing uh, college hockey after that. And so we had a really good team. We didn't lose too many games and, and I had a good defense and forward to uh, – core in front of me so um, my hat's off also to our coaching staff who really believed in me and the ownership who believed in me and you know they take a gamble bringing a kid from Toronto and with no real experience of, of playing junior hockey at 19 years old you know take some guts and uh, I wanted to make sure that I proved them right. Yeah that that's great and that like the just belief in yourself and the belief in from your coaches like you need that as a goalie like no one like you you want that support system because not every game is going to go exactly the way you want and like some games going to be really good some games going to be absolutely terrible but like there's always something to learn and you can always fall back on those people that support you and like take your mind off the game for a little bit and then go back then to the next day and get right back into in a practice in the game like whatever and just keep keep developing from that. Hundred percent, yeah. And and I tried to take every day and, and work as hard as I could on and off the ice. And I really went into that year in really good shape. I put in the time in the summer, and um, I think I led a lot of the the fitness testing in junior when I went there. And, and that really I think translated onto the ice because it it was a mental shift for me that uh, you know if you want to stick around, you want to play, you're gonna have to put in the work. Yeah, exactly. That's a great mindset to have. So like throughout all these opportunities that you've been given, like how you've been embraced these opportunities that are given to you, despite not having an easy path to get to where you are at today. Yeah, a hundred percent, especially in, in these times with COVID uh, this year, sitting at home, uh, I was uh, last year I was playing in England 
and uh, our season got cut short in March. So we were home and uh, basically sitting on my couch until <laughs> as of recently, uh, you know, trying to put in the work as much as you can with the rinks closed and the gyms closed and all that, waiting for a contract and waiting for an opportunity. Nothing in Europe uh, was, was able to happen this year just with, like I said, COVID was, you know, there was a lot of players that were getting sent over from either NHL teams or um, a lot of teams were just taking Europeans because it was easier. And uh, so I was kind of waiting around and thankfully uh, Utah had given me an opportunity again and um, I want to try to make the most of it. Yeah, exactly. So like after your year with Atlanta, you decided to go play division three college hockey at Buffalo state college. Like what was the process like for you to, to have Buffalo state be your school to go to and have a good feeling about going there and playing hockey there? Yeah. So one of my teammates actually also was being recruited by, by Buffalo state uh, so at Christmas time, I went home and just before Christmas, I had called them just to see if there was any interest in uh, me coming there because I knew they had a senior that was graduating and um, I thought there might be an opportunity for me to slip in there. And um, At that point, you know, my numbers were pretty good. I was um, happy with my game and I felt I had, uh, you know, enough of a, a reputation around the league that, you know, teams were might be starting to talk to me a little bit and, you uh, so I called them and I just said, you know, what's the interest level? Would there be any interest? And at the time they said, no, they think they're okay. Uh, there's nothing really that, uh, you know, we can do as far as you for next year. And, and, you know, so I just said, okay. And I just kept working and, and battling as much as I could. And um, around Christmas, they ended up giving me a call. So I was home for Christmas break. I think we had uh, maybe about a week. So I was home for Christmas break and they said, you know what, why don't you come down? When you come to the school, and, um, you know, my, my numbers, I think I had at that point almost 11 shutouts and, um, you know, I felt confident in my game that I could step in there and maybe make a difference. And when I got to campus, <clears throat> I really felt like I was at home and I, I had visited a few other schools and never really felt that feeling when I walked on campus. And I think that's really important. Um, you can't always go to the school that has, you know, the best looking track suits or, the best dressing room or the best rink and you have to go to a school that fits you and uh buffalo state was that for me yeah that that's an awesome path right there and like you don't you don't just go just because the track series and because everything looks cool and everything like that that's a perk but like you just got to make sure yeah. that you feel at home and like it's a school you want to be at for the next four years so like yeah there has in, to be opportunity yeah. there as well exactly 100 you, know, you, you want to play you know, there's, you're, you're not going to develop my, very much by just sitting on the bench or practicing, you know? So that was another thing as well Is like, was I going to play? Cause you know, maybe there was some uh, interest in D one schools and uh, for another year, but was I going to play? And, and that was a thing for me. So I really wanted to make sure that I was going to go and I could make a difference. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point there. So like, did you have any expectations going into your first year of college hockey or were you just like going to go with the flow? Yeah, I had really no expectations. I was uh, happy with my program that I was entering and happy with the school. And I really just wanted, we had 17 freshmen. So we had a big class and we were caught kind of all in the same boat. We were just, you know, there and uh, just going to experience it together. And so I really didn't have the, any expectations. I didn't know anybody going into the school. And I knew they had one senior goalie and another goalie that was coming in with me who was drafted the OHL and was also a really good goalie. And, um, so I knew that my work was going to be cut out for me if I even wanted to play uh, my, my first year or second year. And, um, you know, I just went into camp and I worked my butt off and uh, thankfully I kind of beat both those guys out and uh, they gave me an opportunity to play. And I, from day one of college, when I got there to when I left, I never didn't play a game. So that yeah, was, uh, that's something that I'm pretty proud of. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's a, uh... It's great. You started playing games right away. You played 25 games that first year, which a lot of freshmen don't play that that often. It's like, what was it like being the guy your first year and getting the reps you need? It's a learning experience, that's for sure. Um, you know, it's another jump from junior. And uh, I had to learn a lot about goaltending and a lot about myself and how much work it takes to, to put in every day. You know, with the college schedule, you practice all week and they're pretty grueling schedules because you're you're typically on the ice for a couple hours every day. 
you know, and then Friday, Saturday, it's go time. So you, you put in the work through the week and then you have to make sure that you're performing the weekend because it's a long time from that Saturday to the next Friday, Saturday. So um, it's a little bit different here in pro where sometimes you can forget about those games quickly because you have the turnarounds, you know, you might have a game on Sunday and then you might have a game Monday or Tuesday uh, right after that. So you can forget about that quickly, but with the college schedule, it, it weighs on your mind throughout the year or th excuse me, throughout the week. And uh, you know, so that was a little bit different for me. And I was able to work with a couple of goalie coaches uh, in the Buffalo area um, who were with the Sabres. And um, so they really, you know, worked with me as well. So that was, that was awesome. Yeah. So like, what did you have to learn like the most about college hockey or freshman year to be successful and just like playing games like that to step up from, from juniors? Like what, like, what did you have to do to, what did you have to figure out through the college game and through yourself that helped you be successful throughout those, those years of college? Yeah. Just how to be more efficient in the net and more effective. Um, I, I even, I'm still learning today. You know, I'm, I'm still learning how to be more efficient, how to be uh, maybe a little deeper in my crease or, my, you know, my depth control or you talk about box control and um, guys can zip the puck around pretty quick now. So, you know, you, you definitely have to be less aggressive in certain instances and, and more aggressive in others. And uh, that's something that, like I said, I'm still learning today. And uh, I think every year it evolves and every year as goalies, I think they're generally later bloomers because of that. You know, it takes some some playing to to really get that ingrained in their mind over and over again because it's important stuff. <clears throat> yeah, and that uh, efficiency and like you want to do it effectively, like that's super important because if you don't do it, like you're gonna get scored on. Like you want to keep everything like simple and like you don't want to overdo anything, but you just want to stop the puck and you have to do it as efficiently as possible because you're, you're losing energy if you do something more than you should. And it's just, it's going to cause a backfire in your game from doing that as well. Exactly. And if you're playing consecutive games and uh, you know, throughout the year or throughout your, your four years, you want to have pretty good longevity. So you're going to need to conserve your energy and make sure that your movements are simple, like you said, and effective. Yeah, exactly. It's so like throughout your college career, you play in 25 games your sophomore year, 27 your junior and senior year. It's like, what was your overall experience like in Buffalo State throughout like all the four years of college hockey? It was amazing. Yeah, from, you know, just the friends you meet and the people that you, you meet at school and you have friends for life. And um, aside from the hockey, just the experience of being at school and being playing in the NCAA was was amazing. And um, something that I, I look back on quite often and still keep in touch with a lot of those guys. And then on the hockey front, um, yeah, it, you know, you, you definitely take those experiences from your games and practices and you try to implement them even into my game now. Uh, time management skills with, uh, with school, you, you know, you have to make sure that you're doing your work to be eligible to play. And uh, that's, you know, number one, as they say. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of juggling. You, you, there's a lot of uh, times that where you you just feel like you're too tired to either go to class or go to practice, but you got to do both. And, um, you know, it, it makes a good man out of you for sure. Yeah. So like, what would you do to help yourself recover and not be as tired, especially when you're playing back to back nights, like practices are, are grueling, like, like everything's getting like getting, taking a toll on you. So like, what would you do to help yourself recover and stay stay uh, as stay well that you could perform as best as you could in college you mean yeah um i just definitely make sure you're you're getting good hydration your nutrition is uh number one for sure make sure you're getting good rest don't stay up too late and uh you know maybe on the weekends take it easy on your drinks your alcohol uh, consumption but you still have to be a college student. You still want to enjoy the, the atmosphere of, of being in college. And I think uh, there's a balance there. You have to pick your spots. You can't, uh, you can't be pedal the metal the whole time. So you, you have to make sure that you're, you're doing your uh, workouts as well after keeping up with your strength and, um, you know, having some fun as well. Yeah, exactly. You got to have some fun, but you also got to be serious when you need to be and just get the work done whenever, whenever you have to. So you just gotta exactly. gotta go with that, and then 
like your junior and senior year, you were named assistant captain. So like, what was it like taking on that leadership role of and having an A on your jersey compared to a lot of goalies that don't even get a C or an A on, on their on their jersey? Yeah, that was pretty special. Um, it's something that uh, I look back on now and I think it's uh, pretty neat. You know, it was voted on by my teammates as well, which makes it even more special because it's not coming from coaching staff or anything like that. If, if your peers think highly of you enough to put a letter in your jersey, not that you need a letter to be a leader, uh, but if they think highly enough of you to do that, then um, you must be doing something right. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of, a lot of effort from them as well, you know, because he, I can't be the goal I am today without those guys. So, uh, but that was a pretty neat experience. And uh, I'm glad that uh, they thought highly enough of me to, to do that. Yeah, exactly. That's, you don't, you don't see that very often. A goalie being, having a letter on their jersey, like a lot of goalies are, are leaders within the room. And, but like, they don't have a, uh, you don't have to have a letter to, be a leader like you said so it's it's always special when you get when you actually get that letter on your jersey yeah it definitely is it definitely is yeah so like what were some of your favorite college hockey memories throughout all your years of college hockey uh i'm gonna pick two well i'll pick three i guess the first one obviously being my first game uh we played in oswego and uh they have a beautiful rink and it was completely sold out i think it was one of their whiteout games and in D3 hockey, you're generally not going to get crowds like that where there was like three or 4,000 people and the, the whole place was packed. And um, they had an unbelievable team that year. They always have a really good team. And um, I think we lost like, I don't know, I don't even know what it was, five, five, three or something, but it didn't matter. You know, my parents were there, which is, which made it really special. And um, I think they even saw a big smile out of me, which is uh, pretty rare, especially on the ice. So um that was m number one. Number two was uh, when Penn State went to uh, transition from, I guess they were D1 club to an actual Division One program. Uh, for that year, they went independent. So they were traveling around playing different teams and different conferences and different uh, D3 and D D1 teams as well. Uh, so before they went and played Michigan, they came and played us. So we actually played them at home. We had a really good crowd. That was amazing. It was a buyout game as well. And we ended up beating them three, nothing. And uh, that was, that was a pretty, pretty surreal experience because, you know, they're getting ready to be become a, a big time D one school. And um, that was my number two. And I would say my number three was senior night at, at school at home. Um, we beat us. We go, I think it was, uh, I don't know, two, nothing or four, nothing, something like that. And, you know, aside from the shutouts, just, just beating them, we had never beat them in school history. So for us to do it on senior night <clears throat> was really something special, especially with the guys that we started with 17 freshmen. I think there was nine or 10 of us that ended up graduating together from that freshman class. And uh, we were a really tight knit group and one of the most tight knit groups that I've ever played for and played with. And uh, to do it with those guys was, I think, uh, extremely special. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Just like all the memories that you make from playing, playing your sport, playing college hockey, playing like any sport, like you're playing, like those memories take, it's a lifetime of long of memories. And it's just, it's so much fun being a part of, especially like when you beat a team that you haven't beaten school history a few times, that, that isn't bad. That ain't bad either. So it's always, uh, yeah. always good to have those moments. Yeah, that was, it was cool. Yeah, it's so like, what was it? What was it like playing hockey in the fantastic city of Buffalo? Buffalo is an amazing city. I love Buffalo, um, especially in the summertime. It's a really good place to be. The winters are tough, but um, yeah, they're passionate fans. And at the time, I had a really good friend playing for the Sabres. So that was uh, also really cool. I got to go to school, you know, play my own hockey. And then if he had an extra ticket, I could go watch him five minutes down the road and you know, in the NHL. So that was a, a unbelievable experience as well. Um, but yeah, Buffalo is a great city and uh, any chance I get to go back, I always do. Yeah. Not, not a bad city to, to live in for sure. So uh, like going into going after your senior year a little bit, like after your senior year, you decided to go pro you found yourself spending the last part of the season with the Peoria Rivermen of the SPHL Southern professional hockey league after your season ended, it's like, what was the process like to find a team for the last part of the season after your season ended? 
Yeah, I knew my, going into my senior year, I wanted to con continue playing. Uh, so when we got knocked out of uh, playoffs, I had uh, an agent at, or advisor, I guess you have to call them, but an agent at the time. <clears throat> um, and I was also reaching out to teams as much as I could throughout the year. And then just the way my program worked, I front, I front loaded all my, my last year's classes, my, my major classes to my first semester. So one second semester hit, um, I was hoping that I could talk to some of my professors and, and transition more to an online base. So if I w would go and play somewhere that I could still continue my, my work. And uh, thankfully that's what happened. Um, so I hooked up with uh, Peoria and they said they wanted to bring me in. And so we got knocked out of playoffs. I talked to my professors and they gave me permission to go and they were doing a lot of my work online, which is great. And uh, so I went down to the SP and uh, I spent about three weeks there, I think, and played four games. Um, and we had a really good team there too. And I was really excited because I figured we would take a, you know, have a really good playoff run and, and go far. Unfortunately, we lost in the first round. And um, after that, I, you know, I had a choice either go back to school or uh, the Colorado Eagles, which are at the time were in the East Coast Hockey League. Uh, wanted to call me up. So I actually went to, to Colorado, went there for a few weeks and then went back to school to graduate and finish my exams. Yeah. So like you got into four games, like you said, you went two one one to finish out that year in Peoria. So like, what was your ex first experience with pro hockey and getting your first pro win? Like, yeah, it was amazing. My parents are there and, um, you know, you, you try not to let the, the moment take over you. You definitely have to keep your emotions in check, but I was pretty excited, man. It was, uh, it was a lot of work to get to that point. And, you know, when you, when that, when that puck drops, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, put that stuff aside and now we just got to play the game. You got to play hockey, you know, and, and thankfully we had a really good team and I had a bunch of good teammates that uh, tried to make my job as easy as I could, as easy as they could. That's awesome. Just gotta like it's it's all fun and like you're super excited when it before you start, but when it's when the puck drops, like you said, you put everything aside and you gotta just focus. And like was when you made that first save, were you just like, all right, now I'm settled in, or did it take a few a few more saves after that? Yeah, I, uh, I you know to be honest, I can't really remember. It was it's kind of a blur, but uh, it definitely takes a couple saves to really settle in and, and realize that the game is the same, you know, from college to, to pro it's, it's the same. You, you, their job is to put the puck in the net and your job is to keep it up. Right. Yeah. So if sometimes when you, you get too worked up, you have to simplify the game, simplify what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. The only difference now is that, you know, you can get fired. <laughs> you know, it's a, this is a job, you know, they, they want wins, they want uh, success. So that's uh, something that you just have to kind of push away as well and, and worry about what you're doing and being in the moment. Yeah, for sure. So you also got into two playoff games that season as well. It's like, what was your first experience with playoff hockey, especially since it ho playoff hockey is a lot different from the regular season. Like the intensity is a lot more higher. The games matter a lot more. Like, so like, what was that experience of, with playoff hockey? Like, and how do you do during those stretches of games? Yeah, it was a little different because uh, in the SP, the first round is three games. So it's not a full seven game series. And uh, I actually didn't start either of those games. I got put into the game um, kind of midway, th if I remember correctly, midway through the second period. So you're already, you're getting in, putting into a game already down, you know? So I just had tried to, re to remind myself that, you know, don't go in trying to think that you can, change the outcome of the game previous to when you got in, you know, so all you can do is, is look forward and, and play the way you can play moving forward. So whatever happens once you get in is, is you, but what happened before it was not you. So um, it's just a little mental game. You have to play with yourself. So, but yeah, it's it, like you said, the intensity is uh, definitely heightened. The importance of each game is, is, in, is heightened and um, you want to win. So do they. So you got to do everything you can to, uh, to win, but yeah, those, those games are pretty cool. 
Yeah, so then the following year, you spent the next two years with the Tulsa Oilers in the ECHL. So what were those two years like for your development as a professional goalie? And like you went up the you went up from the SP to the ECHL. So like what was that transition like? Yeah, so when I signed in Tulsa in the summer, um, at that time they were the CHL. So when I got to camp, um, they were still the CHL. A couple of days into training camp, the EH, the ECHL and CHL had merged. So training camp got put on hold until they figured out logistics of everything. So I was in a hotel just waiting, still trying to make the team. I didn't know what league it was going to be in. Um, but once the, the ECHL had, and CHL had merged, it was now one giant ECHL league. Um, camp started up and it went from like a two week camp to like a three day camp. So now my window of opportunity of trying to impress somebody from a two week camp now got condensed into three or four days. So if anyone's ever been to a camp before, you know, you got to hit the ground running, that's for sure. Um, so I, we, I think we played a couple of exhibition games and a little inner squad game. And that was pretty much all that we had time for. And uh, I felt like I played pretty well. And um, there was one teammate of mine, Nathan Lutz, who really stepped up and, and he was a 14 or 13 year vet, I think at that time. And um, he played many games in the American league and East coast. And, um, you know, he, he really vouched for me and went to the coach and said, you know, I think we should take this kid. I found this out years later, obviously, but I think we should take this kid and, and you know, I think he's going to be a, a good player. And um, thankfully, you know, Bruce Ramsey, who was a coach at the time, gave me an opportunity and I ran with it my first year. I think I played somewhere between 50 and 50 games maybe or something like that, 55 games, something like that. And uh, I set an ECHL record for, for Tulsa um, with like 30 wins or 31 wins, something like that. And um, that, that first year was cool. It, it's, it's definitely special. Um, being the ECHL, there was a lot more, a lot more fans in Tulsa is a great place to play. Amazing fans, amazing rink. And uh, you know, we were given all the luxuries of being a pro hockey player. Yeah, just like we were in Peoria as well. And uh, being there the full season is, is special too. But you, you definitely, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, I'm, I'm a D3 guy. This is my mentality. And I think a lot of D3 hockey players or even D1 hockey players are thinking the same thing. Is going into the year, it's like, okay, if I'm a D3 guy and there's maybe a guy coming down on a contract or something like that, like I'm probably going to get let go first. But I really had to um, curb those thoughts. And, and transition them into, okay, I'm here, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm going to work uh, as hard as I can. And if I play, I play, if I don't, then, you know, still be a good teammate and still work hard every day in practice. So those were, uh, those are my thoughts for sure. Yeah. So like, what, what's it like uh, mentally, like what do you have to do to like always stay positive when things might not go right? Like you said, like you were thinking that you're, such, you're just a D3 goalie, like, what did you have to do to like help change that mindset and help like continue to stay positive, especially like when games you get into games and games don't go your way, you give up a few goals that you shouldn't like, what do you do to help yourself stay, stay positive no matter what? I had to change the narrative of being a D three goalie. You know, it doesn't matter where you came from. If you can play, you can play. So you could have come from junior. You could have come from the NHL. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, if you can get in there and you can play the game and you can help your teammates win, so it doesn't matter. And nobody really cares where you came from. All they care about is, is in the moment. Right. So I had to get, I had to get that out of my, my head that I don't belong here kind of mentality. I, I worked hard to get to that point. So I wanted to make sure that people knew that I, I worked hard. You know, that was, that was number one. Number one is I work hard. Number two, I'm a good teammate. And number three is the opportunities that I take. I appreciate the opportunities and I try to make the most of them. That was my mindset. Yeah, that's a that's a great mindset to have because you never know when the next opportunity is coming. Like if you get let go, like you don't know when the next opportunity is coming. So you got to make sure that you make the most of that. And then it's not that's got... not something I can control either. Yeah, sorry exactly. to cut you off, but no, you're you know, <clears throat> um, you know, I, you the cliche is you know can control what you can control. I yeah. can't control whether or not a goalie comes down from the American League and pushes me out. That's just reality. That's the game, right? So. Um, that's something that I had to just go on. I just had to live without knowing that 
maybe today is my last day. So let's, you know, try to make it uh, a good one. Yeah, exactly. And like being, going back to being a good teammate, like you have to be a good teammate because the hockey world is so small that like yeah. someone could find out something and like, you're not a good teammate and like that could push you out and yeah. you just got to support your, your teammates because they're out there playing for you, playing, playing to win, playing to keep the puck out of the net for you. And just, you just got to be a good yeah. teammate. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, you were you were a starter in Tulsa those two years playing 52 games and 45 games your first full full years. So like what was it like playing so many games as a rookie in the league? And then like what would you do in terms of recovery when you're playing that many games in a season compared to what you did in college? Yeah, so don't forget in college you played 25 games, 27 at the most. And even in junior, I, I didn't really play that many, especially back to back games where Per week, you could play at anywhere from three to four games, um, and now obviously never three and threes where you would you would never play that in college. So that was different. That my first year when I played that many games, and even my second year, um, you start to learn a little bit, you know. And thankfully, some days that they gave me off for practice where I didn't uh, didn't have to go on, but I definitely felt guilty when teammates were on and I wasn't. Uh, but you have to get some good rest and. Um, like, I, like I said, your nutrition is huge, making sure that you're getting good food in your body. And uh, it's definitely hard on the road as well, but go the extra distance and pay the extra money for, for good food. Yeah, so I think I think that was the, the most of my recovery and, and making sure that you're still getting your workouts in as well, because, you know, throughout the season, you can lose a lot of uh, muscle and just with a lot of strength and, and you have to pick your spots on the days that you want to go out drinking as well and partying or doing whatever you, you know, whatever you want to do. So that's yeah. Really important. Yeah, for sure. And just, you got to always stay recovered because you don't know, like you're playing that many games, like you're coming back the next day and like, right. you can't, you can't skip a beat. Like you got to, you got to perform at the best of your ability, the best, the highest level you can. You just got to, you can't take that for granted. hundred percent for sure. Yeah, so then the following year, uh, you played in Alaska for the Aces. Like, what was it like playing in Alaska? And, like, I would imagine that the travel was especially super hard during that time because you're the only East Coast team in the in Alaska, so you have to travel to the States from, from Alaska. So, like, how hard was that? It was uh, difficult. In the summertime, I was traded from Tulsa to Alaska, and that in itself, I'd never been traded before. That was uh, – a that was definitely a learning experience. You know, when you're, you feel like uh, a team gets rid of you because you're not wanted is, uh, is challenging on your mind. It's, that's definitely hard, but you try to flip the switch and, and just say, I was traded. Another team does want me though. So if Tulsa isn't the one, maybe Alaska would be. So that was definitely hard to get over. <clears throat> uh, um, thankfully, we had a great team in Alaska as well. And, and just being there was amazing. I mean, it's the countryside out there is unbelievable. We'd have moose just at our car doors in the morning when we go start our cars and uh, being in the mountains is, is amazing. And I don't know if you've ever been to Alaska, but it's uh, pretty special. It's very special. And uh, thankfully we were affiliated with uh, Vancouver at the time. So I ended up uh, getting invited to the Vancouver Canucks camp. So I went to main camp there and then went to their American league affiliated after with Utica and uh, then played the rest of the year in Alaska. And it was uh, pretty cool too, because it was their last year uh, being in the league. They folded at the end of the season, unfortunately. And um, I was happy that I was a part of, you know, history like that. Yeah, for sure. And just like going like in a, like Vancouver a little bit, like what was, what was that camp like and like everything you learned from you're playing, you're with the, best of the best like what did you learn that you're able to take back to to your game in in the coast in the ahl yeah um it was quite an eye-opening experience that's for sure um to just go straight to main camp and, and never want to be drafted even the nhl or go to any camps other than that or go to american league camp before that just going straight to nhl camp was uh was definitely eye-opening I learned a lot about myself and a lot about how hard those guys work and how dedicated those guys in the NHL are uh, to their craft and how professional everybody is. And uh, it's something that I still to this day think about 
um, every year that I go and play somewhere is, you know, I try to put myself in those shoes of those guys. What would those guys do in that situation? Or um, what would they wear? Or how would they act? You know, and I try to carry that into my life uh, moving forward. And so just being around that kind of talent, you try to heighten your game. And, and I think it does help. You know, you surround yourself with good people and uh, hopefully it rubs off on you a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a great, like, you love what, when you're around, you're surrounded by good people and like, especially like you're at the highest level and you're in the NHL at the NHL camp, like in Vancouver, which is a great organization. Like you're learning a lot and like you're getting, you're getting shots on by some, by the top guys and the, some of the top guys in the world. So there's probably a lot to learn from there. Yeah. And coming close to the end of uh, camp at that time, it was the world cup of hockey. So um, guys like the Sedins and uh, their, you know, Markstrom where they were all with uh, their, their teams in Toronto. So when camp finished, they came back and when the tournament finished, they came back and, you know, meeting the, the Sedins, I, I'm essentially a nobody, you know, so they don't need to, they don't really need to talk to me. They don't need to converse with you, but uh, just meeting them in the room, they made you feel like you were one part of the team and two, like you were somebody that actually existed in, in their realm of life. Right. So um, just to be accepted by those guys and just to feel their presence because they definitely walk around with an aura and you can feel it in the room and uh, on the ice too, especially. And uh, that was a, a surreal experience. And, and Ryan Miller was there as well. And just to watch him work and watch him perform at a high level was uh, very, very cool. Very eye opening. That that's unreal. And you're with great, great players. Uh, not, so it's, it's a lot better when, when that's around and you're playing at the top level possible. So it's, yeah. I would imagine that it was, it was amazing <clears throat> during that time. It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So then the next few years you spent time in multiple cities and countries with first being with the Utah Grizzlies in 2017, 18, then you head over to Austria for 10 games with uh, in the Zagreb in the KHL. And then you came back to Utah before going over to Nottingham. So like what made you go from your time in Utah to go play overseas in Austria and Nottingham? And like, what was that transition like? Yeah. So when I signed in Utah at the end of the year uh, with Alaska folding, you become a free agent. Um, and Alaska was one of our favorite trips. I'm a big mountain guy. I love uh, being outdoors and, and Utah I've always heard was really a great organization to play for. <clears throat> so when I reached out to them and we agreed on a, a deal, I was really excited. Um, you know, and I, I, I came here and, and Tim Branham, the coach uh, who is still a coach here now, he, you know, put in a good word with San Diego. So I ended up going to San Diego's camp in the American league uh, before Utah's camp and felt like I played pretty well. And, um, ended up coming back to Utah. <clears throat> we had a, we had a really great team and a lot of good teammates there. Um, it, around January, I knew that, um, I, I either wanted to hopefully get a call up in the American league. I felt like I was playing well enough to get a call up in the American league. And it's tough for goalies with, especially with guys on contract and, uh, being a free agent and, and essentially not coming from a, a stellar program anywhere, or like either the OHL or a D1 program, something like that. Um, it's, it's harder for guys to, to reach that next level. And I told Tim that I wanted to either maybe get a call up if he could help me in, in any way, get a call up or, you know, I was thinking about Europe, I was leaning towards Europe and maybe that was going to be my next, uh, venture kind of thing. And the team in Austria had, had reached out and I felt like it was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up and I took it you know and I felt really bad about leaving my teammates here and you know Tim who, who gave me an opportunity I felt bad about leaving but in this game you have to do what's right for you and if you feel like you need to to make a decision and do something like that and direct your career path some way you have to do that so I felt like it was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up and I really wanted to experience that life and in, in Europe and I always wanted to play in Austria. So I took it and I left in January. We had 10 games left, approximately 10 games left in the Austrian league season. 
and uh, I was hoping to to play well enough that I would get a contract for the next season. And that team was had some financial issues, and uh, I didn't go back the next year. But it was a great experience, and I, I love the league. The league was amazing. There's a lot of good players there, and uh, you know, eventually, I would like to get back there. Yeah. So, like, what was that culture change like going from North America to Utah to going into to Austria? Like, did you what like what was that like? Did you expect like it to be a huge difference? And like, how did it play out? Yeah. So the the team in Zagreb was uh, it's actually in Croatia. So the the league is based out of Austria, but the team was in Croatia. And I've never been to Croatia before. I didn't really even know where it was to be honest with you before I even signed there. And uh, so when I arrived, it was kind of just like, holy moly, what did I get myself into? And um, <clears throat> you have to just have an open mind. You have to be able to, to roll with things. And I think uh, if I hadn't have gone through those, those experiences from junior, where I would not be able to make a team in junior, to not playing in a D1 team, to you know going through those hardships growing up from junior hockey to where I got to then, I don't think I would have been able to one either get the job but to stay there and be able to thrive Um, and you know you kind of get a little bit hardened by experiences like that where you just get thrown into the fire and when I got there the the team was on I think it was like a 10 game losing streak they had just fired their coach and they wanted to make the playoffs and um, we did which was you know pretty cool uh for me anyways, that I could be a part of that and help the team get out of their struggles. And um, we ended up losing the first round to Linz, but uh, yeah, it was a very, very cool experience. Yeah, for sure. So like, was, was it like hard to transition from uh, North American ice to the the ice over in Austria? Or like, was it pretty similar to what, what is in North America? It's a different game. It's definitely a higher skilled game and, and guys, let's just say on the power play have a lot more time in that soft area around the, the slot. And, um, you know, there's some, there's some players that have played in the NHL. A lot of players have played in the NHL in that league and those guys know how to score goals. So, uh, you know, earlier when we had talked about depth control and, uh, learning to play your angles and things like that, it was something all new. My experience was all new and I had to learn on the fly quickly because we only had a couple of games left before playoffs and we had to do well in playoffs. And, uh, you know, that's what I was brought in to do is, is help the team. So it was a very fast learning experience. I had to really, you know, uh, do my work off the ice with the goalie coach there and studying video and knowing where to, to be aggressive and where to, to back off. And, um, you know, I, I still think about that stuff today and, uh, I take it implemented into my game now. Yeah, for sure. It's like, how were the fans over over in Austria? Like, uh, I've heard that like those fans over in Europe are incredible. Um, it's like, what it was, was that like? It was unbelievable. I've never experienced something like that before in my life. My parents actually came over for a playoff run, and you know, <clears throat> when I was calling them, FaceTiming them when I was away, and I was just saying like, these fans all around the league are bananas man it's just like there's fireworks going off in the stands and they've got drums and they're cheering and they've got flags and um it's just completely bananas and you know i i think every hockey player should go over there and experience it wherever it is it doesn't matter what the league is it doesn't matter what the type of hockey it is you just have to go and experience those fans because they are so passionate about the sport and uh even in england this year or this past year you know, I think they're a soccer, soccer nation, which they are. I couldn't believe how passionate those fans were. We would sell out every night and there would be drums and cheers and I'd get messages on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and stuff, whether you have a good game or a bad game, they let you know about it. And, uh, you know, the interaction with the, with the fans like that is amazing. And it's something that you, you definitely feed off of. Yeah. That's just, that's just awesome. Like, I can't imagine going going into our an arena and playing in front of those fans every single night and just it's like a soccer crowd yeah. like it, they're super passionate like you said like they're like doing they like waves down. they're doing waves in the in the stands yeah. like everything like it, that's incredible. Yeah, they never sit down from the puck drop to the end of the game. They stand up the whole time and they're waving their arms and cheering and yelling and screaming. And uh, I remember one game. Uh, 
the fans had were getting pretty rowdy and, and the refs at the time for that game, you know, they had missed a, a bunch of calls and they were giving power plays to the other team and fans in our stands were throwing stuff on the ice because they were so enraged about all these bad calls and they actually needed to call the police in to escort the, the refs out of the building. Um, oh, after the game was done and, and make sure they got to their cars okay and that's just in itself was was uh, <laughs> a wow. experience. that yeah. that's how that's how passionate they are that's that's crazy insane yeah, yeah. yeah so like what was nottingham like you uh you talked about zugrub so like what was nottingham like and just i've i've heard nothing but good things about them from past guests who have been on that played in nottingham so like what was it like playing for playing yeah. over there i loved it it was an exper uh, amazing experience. I didn't know what to expect going over there. Um, you know, I knew what, what Austria was like, and I was hoping it was going to be something similar. I didn't know what the hockey was like. I didn't know what the fans were like. I didn't know, obviously, I've never been to, you know, I never landed in England before, so I didn't know what that experience was going to be like. And um, I, I definitely relied on my past experience going to Europe previous to as far as, like, the culture and, and how to deal with uh, – new environment and different hockey and different, uh, different players, things like that. Um, but I loved it. I loved everything about it. The fans were extremely passionate. The hockey was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And, uh, there's some really good players in that league and yeah, I loved every minute of it. Yeah, that that's unreal. So then going into this year a little bit, you, uh, started out the season with the Utah Grizzlies of the ECHL playing in nine games and you're two, five and one, Right now, it's so like, what was it like starting out the year in Utah during this COVID season, being able to play, play in, in, in an actual game in over 10 months that you haven't been able to play? Yeah, I definitely feel uh, extremely, extremely lucky to be playing. There's a lot of good hockey players out there that aren't playing, sitting on their couches at home. And uh, there's no secret. I mean, for myself, I, I feel like uh, I struggled a little bit at the start of the season. My numbers are are they're showing that and I'll be the first one to admit that I need to be better. Um, as far as our, our team right now, we're as a team, we're, we're struggling a little bit, but we're going to find our, our stride. And uh, we talked earlier about how this stuff happens at the beginning of the season is a lot better than when it happens at the end of the season. So um, it's just a learning experience. Every year is, is something different and you just have to stay as even keel as possible. Never too high, never too low stay as even keel as possible. And there's going to be ups and downs in your career and in, in the season within the games. And, um, you know, you just, the only way to work through it is to, to battle and to put in the work, put in the hard work with your goalie coach, put in the hard work with your strength coach off the ice. And, and that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. And um, yeah, like I said, I'll be the first one to admit that uh, myself and uh, I'm struggling a little bit, but uh, we'll get through it. So I'm excited to, to reach the, you know, the other side uh, and see uh, the other side of things. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're on the mend. Yeah, for sure. He's reached all this, the other end of the tunnel and you'll, you'll be flying after that. So uh, like, what, exactly. what are you, yeah. It's so, like, what are some of the expectations you have for the rest of the season to help like contribute to the Grizzlies and the Eagles success, whether you get called up every, every now and then, like you have been recently, it's like, what, what are some of the expectations going for the rest of the way? Yeah, the expectations for myself are, is obviously to give the team a chance to win every night. Um, you know, I have my own personal goals that, uh, you know, I keep personal with, within myself. And, and, you know, within the team aspect, you, you still have your own personal goals that you have to set. And you want to reach those personal goals because that's going to maybe get you a contract for the next season. Um, so I, I definitely have set forth some of my own goals for, for the rest of the year and, and moving forward. But as a team, we, we want to win whatever team I'm on, whether it's up in the, in uh, the HL with Colorado or with the Grizzlies, we want to win. So whatever I have to do, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, um, whether I'm playing in the games or I'm not playing in the games, being a good teammate and helping the team success, that's what I will do. So, yeah, um, those are, yeah. Yeah. Those are Good. some great goals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, so moving forward, I think uh, we just, like I said, we need to put in the work. We, we got to get back to work and getting back to who we are and, and what are, figuring out what our identity is as a team and 
and uh, we'll be fine. Yeah, I, I love that. And just like you have so many goals that, for yourself and for the team that you want to be, you want to do is be successful, which, which I love. I'm, I'm the same way. So uh, Kevin, I have a few more yeah. questions for you before we get, sure. get this thing done with. So uh, do you have any tips for goalies looking to get to that next level? Yeah. Put in the work um, on the ice, off the ice. You know, we, we talked about this earlier and uh, keeping a good attitude. And there's going to be times where it's stuff's not going your way. And uh, sometimes it feels like there's, there are more of those challenging times, challenging periods. And there are times when you, you feel success, but if you can, within those challenging times, if you can pick it out a couple positive uh, attributes to your game. Let's just say you lose a game and you, you let in a couple bad goals, but you, you still made a couple good saves and there's some good aspects of your game throughout those bad, bad goals or bad games that you need to take moving forward. Forget the, uh, forget the negative stuff and just continue on with the positive stuff. And I know it's, it might sound cliche and all that kind of stuff, but um, it definitely helps. Yeah, for sure. I, I love I love what you said there. That's that's some perfect advice for all the other goalies. So my next question is, uh, in 2016, you were involved in a goalie fight. It's like what what happened? What started the fight? And then like recently in the past like week or so, you also got into another goalie fight against uh, Francois Brassard. It's like what, yeah. what was that like? <laughs> Yeah, uh, my first one was in Rapid City, and uh, we were losing the game, so I actually got pulled with a couple of minutes left to get an extra guy on the ice to try to tie it up. Uh, we ended up not being able to tie it up, so the game was over. And if you've ever been in Rapid City's rink, you have to skate through their zone to get to our dressing room. And there was three of us, if, if you've seen the video, there's three of us on the red line. So if the uh, buzzer goes and a line brawl starts in their end. So three of us who were, were skating off to go, the game was over. So we were skating off to go back into the, to the locker room and we were obviously stopped by this line brawl. We didn't want to get involved because there was too many of us on the ice. So um, at that point, there is our six guys against their five guys in their zone, but their goalie got involved. So six on six. And I leaned over to my buddy standing. We we're obviously upset that we uh, lost the game. And I was standing next to my buddy and I said, if Danny Batacchio, the goalie, if he jumps in, I'm going. So he kind of laughed at me and he was like, okay, yeah, whatever. I was like, no, I'm serious. I'm going. So because it was our six guys against their five guys, their goalie had to step in. So he jumped in, started fighting somebody and I just took off. I was like, all right, screw this. Like it's go time. I got to go, you know? Yeah, it's go time. So I skated down as fast as I could, but because now I was the seventh guy on the ice in his own, I had nobody to take. So I was looking around for somebody and then a guy off their bench jumped on. So I ended up fighting, uh, fighting their guy or I guess wrestling. It wasn't really that much of a fight. And the refs kind of got in there pretty quick. So that was the first one. And uh, it, it blew up actually. Uh, it was all over like ESPN and Fox news and Fox sports and all that stuff. It was, uh, pretty intense, but I ended up getting three game suspension for it and getting fined in the league because I was, I was just about to ask, did like, you get a saucy for that? Yeah, I, <laughs> I got three games for it. So uh, I learned my lesson not to not to jump in because I was technically the seventh guy in off yeah. the bench. So mm -hmm. that was uh, that wasn't smart, but makes for a good story. And then recently, uh, we were losing the game pretty bad. There was about nine seconds left, and uh, we had played three and three, and the third game of the three and three was pretty chippy all weekend. And um, again, line brawl happened and I looked down to the other guy and he was skating kind of towards me and I was skating kind of towards him. And I just went like this and I was like, you want to? And he's like, okay. So that's when we both skated towards center ice and uh, that happened. But um, you know, if I'm going <laughs> to, if I'm going to continue my fighting career, I better learn how to do it. But no, it was fun. It was fun. Thankfully nobody got hurt. Yeah, that's that's the most important thing. But you always you always love a good old goalie fight, no matter no matter what what the score is of the game and what the point of the game is. Like you always love it. You don't see that very often anymore. So it's always good to see that when you can. Yeah, and you know, like I was talking about earlier, we're we're struggling a little bit as a team, and we're going to find our identity. But 
you know, part of my thinking was hopefully maybe this sparks something with, with the boys, you know, it gets us together um, a little more camaraderie, you know, with a line brawl and if it's a goalie fight or something, I thought maybe uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to, to help the team. So if that helps uh, bring us closer together and makes us win games, then, you know, then you're going to do that to it. So yeah, I'm going to do everything I can. Exactly. I, I love that. So my final question for you is you said earlier that you're a bit of, of a bit of a smaller goalie going going in throughout throughout your career. It's like what did you have to learn throughout that time to help your help yourself be successful, especially being that smaller goalie? Yeah, positioning. Positioning. So I, I grew a little bit later. I'm just under six one now, six one now. Um, but definitely positioning. And uh when I was growing up, there wasn't quite as many tools or tricks or uh, YouTube, for instance, um, when, you know, to learn to teach yourself. Um, it, the different style of goaltending when I started it was like a lot of half butterfly, a lot of like flying poke checks and just like trying to get yourself in front of it any way you can. And now it's a lot more technical. Even kids I teach now, they're they're at seven eight years old they're so technically sound it's like i'm learning from them it's like holy moly like i didn't know you could do that kind of stuff you know so um definitely work on your your technique and your positioning and your your fitness level and being able to get over to pucks and battle and and um your composure and all that stuff works into play and it, if you're you know take a look at the nhl some of the best goals in the nhl are, are smaller guys and i take for instance uh, carry price or um even uh, uh, Saros, UC Saros in, in Nashville. He's a smaller guy, but he's just so technically sound, so positionally sound that he can get in front of pucks and he doesn't have to be that big because he takes up all the net. So uh, that's something that, you know, make sure that uh, if there's any advice I would give to younger goalies is do your research, go on YouTube. There's tons of stuff on YouTube, go on Instagram. I'm sure lots of people follow guys on Instagram. They give this content out for free. And uh, you can just study all day instead of scroll mindlessly scrolling, you know, worrying about dumb videos like goalie fights. Uh, look on something that might actually help you in your career. So that's my advice for, for younger goalies. Yeah, that's that's great stuff there. And that was a great that's a great way to end things off. So Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate Thanks, your yeah, time. Yeah. And I want to wish you the thank best you. of luck with Utah, Colorado, wherever you're gonna stick around. Just best of luck appreciate to you. It. Good luck the rest of the way. And this was a ton of fun. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.